for 2020, Mazda made some improvements and some new standard features for this 2020 CX-5. Although it's still running on its 2017 platform, the CX-5 has had improvements continuously throughout the years and this 2020 is no different. We're gonna see if the CX-5 still has what it takes with everything that it offers to compete with other new offerings in the class. We're gonna take a full look and a test drive. Let's get started. So are there any changes to the styling? No, not really, but for 2019, they added a couple trims and changed the wheels. And on this 2020 model, you're still gonna get the same type of Kodo design language that they share with their other models. It's a very attractive design. Leave your comments down below. You're gonna get LED daytime running lights, full LED headlights, and even adaptive lighting that I'll show you in a test drive. These headlights do a very nice job, and they look really slick as well with this big, bold grill. And this color is the Soul Red. This is Mazda's signature color. It pairs well and looks great with Mazda's. It's a very deep red. The camera just does not do it justice at all. 19 inch wheels on our model here. They're a dark silver with 225 55 series tires. You still get power folding mirrors, but those are now optional on the GT trim instead of just the turbo models. The chassis and suspension was retuned in 2019. That carries over for 2020 for improved performance and comfort. Still get G-vectoring. And the overall dimensions of the CX-5 are very nice and easy to maneuver at 179 inches long. A little bit smaller than some of the competitors like the RAV4, CRV, Ford Escape. Then you're going to get LED taillights, LED license plate lights, and a dual exhaust with a bright finish in the back. It's going to be standard. So overall, the CX-5 is attractive on the outside, even in this 2020 model. Is the CX-5 spacious? Well, not quite as much as some competitors, and this is where you're going to lack a little bit of that as we go ahead and look at the rest of the interior. Mazda does not give you a foot activated option or anything quite like that, but you still get a power tailgate on the GT trim and higher, and you can get it optional on the Touring trim. And then once you get back here behind the second row, you're going to get just about 31 cubic feet. It's a nice area with a couple of tie downs and some hidden underfloor storage as well. That's going to give you a spare tire that's also standard on every single trim. There are even pull tabs to lower down the seats in a 40-20-40 split. So you don't have to reach up to the front. And then with those down, it's going to give you about 60 cubic feet. So not as good as some competitors, but still a very spacious and practical area overall. One thing that is new is that Mazda got rid of their old key fob and gave you this new one. This is standard on every trim, so there's no buttons on the biggest part. They're all right there. You can open up your tailgate. There's just no remote start on here, which is a bummer. With the smart key system, there's a button that you can press right here to lock or unlock the vehicle. And let's say you shut it, you have the key fob with you. You can just walk away and it's gonna lock automatically. And the mirror's gonna fold and you can turn that off or on. Climbing into the CX-5 is a piece of cake. It's nice and smooth getting in, excellent crossover height if you have mobility issues. In the last CX-5 video I did, I told you what every specific trim level got. So I'm gonna tell you about this signature. This gets the nicest seats of the bunch. You've got this brown Napa leather seats. This was introduced in 2019. They're heated and ventilated with two position memory settings as well. They look excellent. They've got a deep brown color to them. Good amount of bolstering without being over aggressive the only complaint i would have is that they do seem a little bit stiff and it's only two-way lumbar instead of four-way lumbar space in here is good though it does feel a little tighter than some others because it's kind of a driver oriented almost like a cockpit feel you've got a wide center console so it can feel kind of tight but really headroom is good shoulder room is good hip room is pretty good as well if you are a larger individual you will definitely want to check it out for yourself all trims get the leather steering wheel standard. There's no power adjustable wheel. Some of you maybe would have expected that with the premium aspect from Mazda. It's got a good range of motion. Um, the signature trim has its own special stitching. It's heated standard here, and you can even get a heated steering wheel all the way down on the Grand Touring trim, which is a wonderful feature. When you take a look at the interior of the CX-5, this is where you're gonna find a lot of the attention to detail and some of the movements in trim pieces and features, depending on what trim you get, you'll get genuine layered wood trim on our signature model, as well as satin chrome accents. So it's a really nice premium area. Now I showed you guys the interior before, but let me show you again real quick. You've got a soft upper material on the door. 
You've even got this genuine wood trim, the accent pieces. The armrest is nice, but it does get rather skinny back here, so it's not the most useful for me. You've got all automatic windows, nice storage area right here, and a good size bottle holder. Now Mazda goes with the same steering wheel design, but you will notice that Mazda actually updated the font in some areas of the vehicle, including the manual, the actual manual, but this is easy to use. Um, the buttons are not my favorite, just a small complaint, but the steering wheel is leather wrapped. It is also heated. The information display in front is the same. You've got some physical gauges, but you also have that information display right in the middle. You can scroll through different information, not quite as much as some, but it's driver oriented, uh, which is nice, which I appreciate. And then right in front of you, you get this active driving display, which is now optional on the Grand Touring instead of just the top two trims. It shows you a good amount of information, your cruise control, your speed, even blind spot indicators. This entire upper portion of the DAS is a soft material. You've got the same trim pieces and that wood running across. And now with this screen, it is tablet style. That's not different, but Mazda actually gives you an eight inch screen on the upper trims instead of just a seven inch screen. You still get Apple CarPlay, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get a 360 camera. You control it with the, the dial down by your hand. Here's a quick look at the 360 camera. The clarity is still not the best, but there are a couple different views that you can scroll through, so it's still nice to have nonetheless. Speaker systems will range from four to six speaker or to 10 speaker on the Grand Touring model with the Bose system, which does sound nice in the CX-5. Rain sensing windshield wipers are now standard, which we had these before depending on the trim, but they are now standard. Mazda's push button start right there, the heated steering wheel button, and then your dual zone climate control, which you will get on the touring trim and higher, as well as your all your ventilated and heated seat buttons. You've got a 12 volt power outlet down there and a rubber liner, no wireless charging though. Now Mazda still gives you the same center console, nothing has changed, sport mode. Um, you can move over to a manual mode, a lot of black, uh, shiny plastic right here, the glossy black. I'd like to see a little bit of change with this because it does get kind of crowded back here with your brake hold, electronic parking brake, your command center right here, which is nice, and the bottle holders. Bottle holders accommodate pretty much anything that you need, but if you have one here or even two here um, and your armrest, this does get a little, you know, not the most, it's not the most ergonomic to use with your arm up here, bottle holder, bottle holder here. I'd like to see a little bit of space move, but nonetheless, this does look nice and you even have some nice leather running on the side right here. The armrest is small. It does not slide forward. You open it up, you got a couple USBs, you've got an extra charging port and a removable tray. Mazda also gives you an off-road traction assist button, which they did not have. You also have uh, parking sensors, lane keeping system, and your panoramic monitor right there. Get an automatic dimming rear view mirror. You've got LED lighting in our trim. Still get a sunglass holder, and then a traditional moonroof. There's no panoramic roof in here. And then you can see right there, there's one of the little bit of ambient light that you get in the signature trim. Now visibility, as we look out the back, Typical crossover, not the best, certainly not horrible, and your blind spot indicators do help you quite a bit. Now, when you hop into the back seat, you're still gonna get the same nice leather material with some perforation in it. The perforation is kind of a negative because there's no ventilation back here, but that just means you can get some gunk and some kids snacks and stuff in the seats. Something I didn't really think about before, but that's a very real possibility. And as you can see, I have a car seat base right here. It is definitely tight sitting next to it. And at five foot nine, I had to move my seat forward. I have it back again right here, but I had to move it forward in order to fit a small infant car seat, rear facing car seat in the middle here. So if I definitely had it behind me, I would have to move my seat a lot more than I would want to. It seems like there's a lot more space in this back seat. If I had this seat a little bit further forward, which it can go, I've got a lot of space. I can still sit here comfortably with my knees and my feet. The seats can also recline with the lever right here. They don't go back that far, but that is always nice. I've got good headroom even when I'm sitting up tall, so that's not a worry. The seats don't slide forward and backwards though. You will get two AC vents right in front of you on the touring trim. And then one negative is that the USB ports and the heated seat controls and the cup holders are all right here, which is a bummer for me because we do have a rear facing car seat in here quite a bit. And my wife likes to sit on each side 
And in order to access this stuff, it just doesn't work when there's an actual car seat here. However, it is nice to have heated outboard seats, optional on the GT trim, and then standard on the reserve and the signature. For 2020, it wasn't just enough for Mazda to tweak some of the features. Uh, they had to do something under the hood as well. Now you still get the turbocharged engine available on the top two trims and the naturally aspirated engine, but you now have more torque at 320 pound-feet of torque instead of 310. The best horsepower and torque numbers of course come with 93 octane fuel, but you can still get a healthy amount of power and torque with regular fuel. It's all-wheel drive only on this turbo model. And with this all-wheel drive turbo that is quite peppy, you'll get 22 miles per gallon city and 27 miles per gallon highway. If you want a more efficient option, you can go with the Grand Touring trim or lower and get the naturally aspirated option. And one way that Mazda really differentiates themselves from the trend is that they use a conventional six-speed automatic. It's not nine-speed, it's not a 10-speed, it's not a bunch of gears or a continuous variable transmission. This six-speed pairs very well with this turbocharged engine. All right, y'all, we are getting on the drive in the CX-5. I'm gonna tell you what it's like to drive, what it's like to live with this, how it compares to some of the others in the class, and even some of the changes they made with the driving experience that you probably didn't hear about in other reviews or even notice if you drove it. So I just told you about the bump in torque, and that's only if you put premium fuel in, which you don't have to, but they also tuned or changed the engine harmonics to give it a nicer sound under acceleration. And we'll get on it in a little bit and really see what it sounds like. Plus, Mazda went above and beyond and made even more changes to the noise, vibration, and harshness to make the CX-5 quieter and certainly the quietest in the class when you're looking at other mainstream brands of this class. Now, this road that I'm getting on is not a smooth road by any means. We have concrete and there's a lot of broken up areas. It's kind of almost a little up and down. It moves the vehicle around a fair amount, no matter what kind of vehicle I'm in. And if you had to knock something about the driving experience of the CX-5, it would probably be, most people, at least on the comments of the last video I had, would be the stiffness of the ride. Now, this signature trim that I'm in has 19 inch wheels, which are pretty large. The tires are not quite as thick as some others. And since the Mazda handles so well, it, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna give a little bit on the ride quality. The quality is still good. And in my opinion, I still think it rides really well. It soaks up some really big bumps really well. There's not hardly any harshness on some big bumps, but the general feeling of the ride can be kind of stiff. And coming to a stop there, the brake pedal in the CX-5 is also another point that has a softness to it. You don't have a problem getting the vehicle stopped, it's just that the brake pedal itself is actually kind of soft. Now all-wheel drive is standard. I'm gonna go ahead and get on it. about you but I don't remember <laughs> what the CX-5 sounded like for 2019 but it's got a nice sound to it especially for a 2.5 liter turbo it's not a big engine but it's got enough power so with the turbo if you've never driven a turbo before you don't have to accelerate very much you put your foot down a little bit and it goes and there's certainly a little bit of a delay that was not in sport mode I'm getting on the brakes again brakes are responding well and uh, for most of you once you get used to the softness of the pedal it'll honestly feel a little bit more natural than some other brakes that are kind of jumpy the steering feel of the cx-5 is a little on the heavier side when you compare it to some other vehicles in the class and that can be a pro and a con depending on how you look at it it has a better more direct feel we'll go around some corners in a little bit but parking and you know more lackadaisical type of maneuvers takes a little bit more effort so whether you like that or not now i'm going to put the cx-5 in sport mode with that little button there's no eco mode even going slow sport mode dropped a gear to where the rpms went up a little bit and it's pretty smooth it has G-Vectoring, a software system to help you corner. It actually kind of uses some engine braking. And I have
haven't, I didn't floor it with either of those. The CX-5 doesn't need to be floored. It holds those RPMs pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of that. Most of you aren't gonna drive in sport mode, uh, but the CX-5 is a joy to drive. That's the biggest thing. If you've never driven a Mazda, you're gonna appreciate how engaging it is to drive this, even if that's not your main purpose for buying the vehicle. That's for sure. Just cornering is easy and excellent. I wouldn't necessarily call it a sporty vehicle because it's not like a burner. I mean, it's fast and it handles well, but it's not necessarily like a, an Acura RDX type of sporty with its A-Spec trim. Now this does have the radar cruise control, the lane keeping system. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. I'm gonna set it to this truck. I'm gonna make it so that it makes us move further away with our lane keeping system. It does not center you in your lane, but it will not let me leave my lane. It's gonna turn me back in. It shows me right on my head up display. It does a nice job and it even shows you your blind spots on the head up display. And you can get rid of that. You can move it up and down, change all of that if you want to. And you can see some good information on your display here as well. Now in terms of daily driving the CX-5, I've enjoyed it. Some of you in the last video have said that it is kind of stiff. Uh, a stiff ride and that you did not enjoy that aspect of it but to me I thought it was fine you would definitely have to get in one yourself and experiment with that and see just how stiff the ride is um, perhaps you need to take some air out of your tires maybe you should move to a lower trim level where you don't have quite as big of tires and now one area where the CX-5 really shines that you probably noticed already is it's quiet and this is a rougher textured road that makes a lot of road noise enter the vehicle. And with a lot of vehicles, it can be pretty obnoxious in here. And I'm sure the camera is picking up more noise than is actually present in here. There is some tire noise, but honestly, on the interstate uh, and even on this type of road surface, this tested quieter than the most recent Jaguar that I was in and quieter than the most recent Cadillac that I was in. That says a lot, and it's definitely quieter than other mainstream brands, especially the Toyota RAV4, the Nissan Rogue, um, a couple of the big sellers like that. So if you're looking for a vehicle that drives nice, that can still be practical to haul your kids, your family around, or all your stuff in the back, and be kind of fun, and have all of the features that you really want, this has a lot of features. Whether you look at the head-up display, the nice stereo system, a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, the handling performance of it, it's pretty well loaded when you want to get it. Not to mention the quality of the materials in here. Not a peep of rattles at all in here. And it's just a very solid, well-rounded and well-built vehicle, at least on these initial impressions. I guess time will tell. If you want a CX-5 without a turbo, you have to go with the Grand Touring or lower. The 2018, 2019, and 2020 models have cylinder deactivation on the non-turbo models. The 2017 model does not have cylinder deactivation, so that may be the one you're looking for. If you are afraid of the turbo or cylinder deactivation, go ahead and look at the 2017, because it is very similar to this. You don't have the high-end materials with the signature trim, but the Grand Touring and Touring models can give you a lot of features for the money. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up with the CX-5. I hope you enjoyed the test drive. Now to wrap things up on the CX-5, it still has that premium feel and offering and it's a very quiet vehicle, just like a luxury vehicle. Now if you're looking for the most practical, the most spacious type of offering in this class, the CX-5 is not for you. But if you're okay with some of the lack of space that it has in its cargo space and you still love the driving dynamics and the look and all of the features that you get at each price point it's hard to argue with this 2020 Mazda CX-5. Mazda is really unique with the way that it drives everything that it offers and the feel that you get when you're inside the vehicle and truly I think it's still one of the best options in this class. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know below what you think of the CX-5. Be sure to check out some of these other videos and subscribe for new videos every week. Have a great rest of your day.